Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Ashley Davis and most of you will know me from the websites T-Rex Tuning and Heli Tuning. Um, what I'm doing today is putting together a video uh, for OptiPower. It's something that uh, Andy and I at OptiPower have discussed uh, in the recent past and it's to do with uh, how we test the OptiPower LiPos in order to work out what the rating should be on the pack. So this is the, the continuous rating 30C generally is what gets written on the OptiPower packs. And we wanted to produce this video really to back up what we say about the OptiPower packs which is the rating that's written on the pack is what the pack can do. And there's been some uh, various chat on forums and that sort of thing recently um, casting some doubt as to whether pack ratings are correct or not. Um, it wasn't purely aimed at OptiPower but it was aimed at various manufacturers uh, and Andy and I thought that uh, this was the perfect opportunity to actually show people a OptiPower pack being discharged at its maximum C rating. Uh, I'm going to try and do this as one continuous shoot once I've done this introduction so you can see the whole thing going on, you can see the graphs being generated uh, you can see the pack connected up to the discharger. I'll have temperature probes attached to the pack. Um, full graphing facilities, as I said, showing the discharge curve from the pack as it's discharged. Uh, and really just show that the pack is completely capable of doing uh, what's written on the label. So uh, just to explain what we're looking at here, what you're looking at is a 2 kilowatt discharge rig. This is a uh, this is the uh, CBA3 test system, but uh, normally when you buy a CBA3 you would get this little device over here, let me just point it out. This is the CBA3, this little thing here, and it's not really very capable of doing high discharges, uh, certainly not at the kind of uh, amperage levels that we're going to do today. I'm going to be well over 100 amps today with this discharge. Um, that little device will do, I don't know, 10, 15 amps. You connect it like to that. these amplifiers, and these amplifiers with the huge fans on them um, to cool down the, um, the uh, heat sinks in them are what amplify the CBA up to 20 times its normal discharge capacity. Uh, and that will allow me to do a 30C discharge on a 4000 milliamp pack. Uh, which is what we're going to do today. So uh, I'm going to put uh, 120 amps through a LiPo from start to finish. Um, continuous discharge at 120 amps. Uh, and that will all be recorded on the computer screen here um, where I'll have the, uh, the CBA3 running its uh, analyzer software which will be graphing what's going on with uh, the pack how the pack is handling the discharge uh, and then at the end when it's completed and we've looked at the discharge curve we'll then have a closer look at the pack just to show that there's no puffing um, and that the pack is still uh, you know perfectly serviceable and able to uh, be used uh, charged and reused again okay so that's uh, the introduction uh, what I'll do next is connect up the pack and I'll show you that uh, how it's connected up um, we'll sit the temperature probe under the pack um, to measure the temperature of the pack uh, and then we'll kick off the uh, discharge, discharge and see how we go. Okay, so here I have my pack ready to be connected to the discharger. Uh, and what I've just done here is put it next to a OptiPower 6S 5000 pack just for a size comparison just as verification that this isn't you know, some oversized pack or it's not the capacity stated on it. Um, this pack doesn't come with the OptiPower label on it because this is one of my test packs that I use for the independent testing. Uh, and just to give you another example of that, I've got another pack here. This is a 1300 30C pack. Recently went through testing and I believe these are now in the OptiPower range. Uh, again with just an ordinary label on it to say what it is and this is the manufacturer's rating written on the pack and you can see 
on the 4000 milliamp pack it does have 30C written on here as the manufacturer rating and it's my job to verify whether that rating is in fact correct or not. Okay so I'm going to connect this pack up to the discharger now. Okay so here we have the pack connected up to the charger. I've still got the 6S5000 alongside it so you can see it in, is indeed the same pack. So we'll just move that one out of the way and uh, you can see, excuse my shadow getting in the way here, but uh, you can see that that's connected up to the discharge cable there. Uh, and I'm going to try and do all of this in one take. And the little lead that you can see over the back here is the temperature probe, it's just sitting under the pack there, just to monitor the temperature. So I'm now not going to turn the camera off until the discharge has been completed. Back onto the tripod. Okay, so I'm just getting my laptop ready here in the, in the background to do the test. Swing this round so you can see. Okay. Let's get a bit closer on the screen. Right, so we'll set up a new test. Uh, let's just get in a bit closer so you can read what's going on here. Okay, so we're going to be discharging a 4 milliamp pack, oh, sorry, 4 amp pack, um, which is 4 cells. Let's call this an OMT4000 for the name of the test. We'll discharge down to 3 volts per cell, so our end in voltage will be 12 volts. As you can see I'm using the full 2 kilowatt capability of the charger, or discharger I should say. The amps will be 120 amps for the entire discharge, which is 30C. I'm going to graph the temperature and I'm also going to graph the recovery time. What this is going to show is um, how the temperature continues to climb. Um, when the test is completed and also the voltage recovery on the pack once the discharge amps have been removed. Okay, so that's everything in place. Let's start the discharge now. So we get a warning that this is rather a high discharge um, and probably beyond what they would recommend for discharging a pack. We're not going to worry about that, we're just going to say yes and uh, get the discharge underway. So if I just come out a bit here, I see the graph. Unfortunately it will get a bit noisy now as the fans spin up on the discharge rig. Okay, so this is a 30C pack. Now typically what you'd expect to see if this pack wasn't capable of discharging at this level is that you would see a dip in the graph here and then a recovery in the voltage. As you can see, that hasn't happened. The curve has come down and then flattened out, which indicates that the pack is not being stressed beyond its capabilities. You can see the temperature climbing nicely there on the discharge, uh, which is pretty much what you would expect for a 30C discharge. This is going to be really giving the pack a hard time. Uh, along the bottom of the graph here, if I can get it in, I'm sorry, sorry about that, you can see the amp hours, and if I go over here to the right and zoom in, you can see the number of amps and watts being put through the pack, 120 amps, 1.58 kilowatts and you can see that uh, we're now coming towards the end of the discharge and this is 30C so it's not a very long discharge and what we'd be hoping for is for the pack to return close to its stated capacity 
Now we see the voltage recovery now, now that the, the uh, discharge is completed. And you see that the pack recovers quite, quite quickly. And now the temperature will continue to climb now um, as it measures for a further one minute. And we'll see what the overall ending temperature of the pack is. If we look over to the right here, we can see how much capacity the pack returned. And you can see it was 3.8 amp hours at 30C. Now, what we'd expect is it not to return its full capacity at 30C, um, but it should return more than 80% of its capacity at its maximum rated discharge. Um, for it to be capable of doing that and that of course 3.8 amp hours is well beyond 80% of its um, overall capacity. You can see our temperature at the end of the test there 53 degrees C well within what you'd expect for uh, a pack at the end of a 30C discharge very good temperature control you're not, you wouldn't expect to have any problems with that at the field in terms of thermal runaway or a fire starting. If I'll just end the test now and we'll swivel back across here to where the pack is. So I want to show you the pack now. So what I'm going to do is just unbolt the pack. see that no puffing has occurred on the pack, it's still completely square, no puffing at all, no softness to the pack, still nice and hard, it's quite hot uh, as you'd expect having done a 30C discharge, feels like holding a hot cup of coffee at the moment, but uh, it's done that uh, perfectly well and produced a reasonable discharge graph for a 30C pack. Now something not a lot of people know is that OptiPower themselves don't actually set the C ratings on the packs. That's actually done by me as the independent tester. Uh, it's my job to run the packs through this testing and verify whether the manufacturer ratings are what we expect they to, them to be. If they're not, we downrate the pack to what its actual rating is. If they are what the manufacturer stated, as is the case with this particular pack, then we put 30C on the pack. Now something I do want to point out is that the pack that we discharged here is not a single cell. This is actually a four cell pack, exactly as you would buy if you bought a pack from OptiPower. So this is actual pack testing, delivering a 30C discharge, no problem at all. Okay, that's everything. Thanks very much.